Folks, so every October I try to make a video about a bad horror movie. It's always so like stressful and overwhelming because I'm like working extra hard to get it out before Halloween. And this year I wanted to alleviate some stress. So um, I'm putting out my Halloween video right now. So happy Halloween 2023, everybody. I got a question for you. Have you ever watched the movie Saw and thought to yourself, hmm, this is great, but where's Jesus? I know I have, and thankfully, my prayers have been answered in the form of this movie, The Reconciler. Now, this film wasn't advertised as a Christian remake of Saw, but once I watched it, there's no other way to describe it. For those of you who don't know, the Saw franchise focuses on a serial killer named Jigsaw who kidnaps people who have done bad things and puts them in these like elaborate traps to force them to fight for their lives. For example, in the opening scene of Saw 2, Jigsaw kidnaps this guy who's apparently a snitch and he puts his head in a device that will unalive him if he doesn't open it in time with the key that was surgically placed behind his eyeball. So yeah. Pretty gnarly. And obviously the Christian remake of Saw doesn't feature any violence or gore because it's a Christian movie. But it does feature an eerily similar plot. And also, most of you probably know the other staple of the Saw franchise is a crazy twist ending. And this movie has that as well. So without further ado, let's watch The Reconciler. Oh wait, sorry, before we go any further, The Reconciler? I hardly know her. So the movie starts the same way the first Saw movie starts. Two people passed out on the floor in some random location. The first guy, Smitty, gets up and begins searching for a way out. And the only thing that this scene does is make me think that Smitty is not potty trained. Oh, man, just my luck. First the kidnapping, now I gotta learn how to use one of these. He then wakes up the other guy, Ed, by poking him with Ed's cane. What? 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 Oh, can I have my cane? What? I have a hurt leg. It's kind of hard to <laughs> yeah. walk. Without... Sorry. I, uh, I wonder if that was the actual diagnosis from the doctor. Please, doc, you gotta help me. My my leg really hurts. Yep. Sorry. Seems like another classic case of hurt leg. Oh, no. What's the cure? Well, the year was 1978. Robert Smith, just a young boy. This is what I meant. Okay, so the boys start looking around for ways to escape this room that they're locked in, but they can't find anything. All they really find is a hurt shoulder. I think I just bruised it. So they ultimately accept their fate of being trapped there. I don't think they mean to kill us, at least not right away. And already we can see that this movie is Saw, but Christian. You know, like Saw, but a little nicer. In the original Saw film, they were chained up in a dirty old bathroom. But this one, they've got like several rooms. They got like a private bathroom. Like this is like a vacation for them pretty much. Yeah, man. We then cut to this other character named Lori. She's a reporter who says everything she's typing just out loud. Prominence. Eldridge family. Lori, wow. shut up. Hey, beautiful. Every day you can't just oh, say is. all the words you're typing out loud. We all heard everything Sarah. you sexted to your husband. You know that, right? The occasion disgusting. Was celebrated. Can't have one day of silence, man. This, this was supposed to be a good day. You know, whoever the boss calls over to his desk is getting a promotion. And I think it's going to be me. Lori? Yeah? Come and see me, please. Come on! Also, I love this scene so much because, like, the wedding article that she was writing was so clearly keyframed manually onto the screen, like, instead of using actual motion tracking. And whoever did it did a very poor job. Like, you can see it, like, overflowing in the cubicle, pretty much. <laughs> but hey, that's what happens when you spend all the budget on high-quality actors. Ooh, you are keeping up. Oh, yeah, covering the latest fashion shows. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Also, dude, this boss character, he has the opposite problem of Lori. I can't understand anything this man says. Factory power cars. Look, I've been speaking English for almost like 30 years, and the way this guy talks makes me feel like I've never heard an English word before. I was talking to my dad over the holiday, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just said, uh, you know, my dad says God is not dead. Huh? We act like he what is. What are you talking about? Good and evil, hit the cookie. What are you saying? Good and evil, hit the cookie. Okay, I don't know if I'm just exhausted, but that audio clip right there, I've been replaying it all night and I'm losing. What does he say there, dude? Good and evil, hit the cookie. Good and evil, hit the cookie. Good and evil, hit the cookie. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think he is saying here because I have no, I have no idea. So after replaying the scene like five, 
thousand times I realized what he said. Except for that one part. I still don't know what he said there. Good and evil. Hey, look at me. You know, he wants her to go out into the world and write a real hard-hitting story. A real story. So he tells her to go out and write a story about how people don't believe in God anymore and it's like ruining the planet. And she agrees. On my desk, I want it. All right. Also, yo, where the f is this office, dude? It looks like the room where they filmed the first actual Saw movie. There's like a pipe in the corner, like weird, dirty tiling on the wall. I feel like if the camera panned down a little bit, you'd see two guys sawing their legs. <laughs> okay, so we now cut back to Ed and Smitty, and we see them getting to know each other a little bit. What is it exactly that you do? I'm a reporter. So what do you do for a living? Graphic designer. And that is the whole scene. We then immediately cut up to close-up shots of a squirting cross. I would never knew I would say those words in that order, but here I am. And then it cuts to an interview between Lori and a pastor. And listen, I really don't want to focus too much on this storyline because it literally goes nowhere. You know, in like a regular serial killer movie, there's a reporter maybe doing a story about the serial killer. You know, it shows them gathering clues and maybe the movie ends with the reporter saving the day, you know? Not this movie. While there's the main storyline about the jigsaw style kidnapper, there's also another storyline of Lori just interviewing people about God. And that's it. That's so stupid. That's like if the movie Zodiac still featured all the serial killer stuff, but whenever it cut to Jake Gyllenhaal's detective character, it was just him like looking for his keys. You know, like what? It has nothing to do with the story. Okay, you know what? I'm actually just gonna, I'm gonna speed run through this whole storyline because I don't wanna keep cutting back to it because I cannot stress enough. It is so stupid and pointless. So this pastor ends the interview with a suggestion for Lori. Would you be willing to interview some other people first? Religious leaders? No, just plain folks who might give you a completely different perspective. Sounds like an interesting angle. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what reporting is, dude. Could you interview a bunch of different people with like varying viewpoints so you could form your own journalistic opinion? It's an interesting angle. So Lori takes his advice. She goes out and interviews, you know, regular, ordinary people. But literally everybody she talks to is the most Christian person of all time. For example, first she goes and talks to some guy who works at a soup kitchen who says that soon it's going to be illegal to pray in the United States. Where I come from? Praying public or private? That's a wrestleable offense. Are you saying that's where you think we're headed? That's a little ridiculous, but hey, at least the soup looks good. My favorite, water soup. She then visits a little girl who had a near-death experience, went to heaven and met Jesus. How did you know it was Jesus? I just did. And this part is insane because the little girl says the only reason Jesus sent the little girl back to earth was to tell Lori that Jesus misses her. Jesus had the angels take me back. Do you know why? To tell you. Jesus told me you were coming. And he loves you very much. And he wants you back. Your life is meaningless to me, little girl, but sure, I'll keep you alive so you can tell this random woman that I'm mad at her for not going to church anymore. Like, Jesus. Oh yeah, that's his, <laughs> his name. Maybe that's why his name is Jesus. He kept doing like that and people were like, Jesus, man. And then, you know, kind of just stuck. And then finally, Lori visits this old woman who talks about how she gave everything up for God. Literally. She shows Lori a newspaper article about her giving away her $35 million fortune to Christian charities. Yo, dude, imagine having $35 million and being like, yeah, I'm gonna put it all on conversion therapy, baby. I want my televangelist to fly around on a private jet so Jesus will go down on me in heaven. Hey lady, you could have given some of that money to the VFX department, you jerk. We were religious. And then the big conclusion of the storyline, she goes home, she reads the Bible and cries. And that's it. And that storyline confirms two things. One, Christians wanna be oppressed so Bad dude. It has always been so easy to be a Christian in America. But every single Christian she interviewed is like, yeah, life sucks now because people don't like God anymore. Well, except for the little girl who was like, I'm only alive because Jesus used me as a carrier pigeon. And like, this is the thing I don't understand. If things are so bad because people stopped loving God so much, like I lose followers all the time. You don't see me start hurricanes, you know? Am I saying I'm better than God? No. And the other thing that this storyline confirms is Christian movies are just people talking. Like, nothing happens. It's the same in the 2025 movie I talked about last year. It's just people sitting around being like, So, God. Yeah, I agree, but also Jesus. Oh, but of course. Like, it's just talking the whole time. Show me something else. 
Okay, never mind. Let's just... Talking's fine. Okay, with that storyline done, let's cut back to Smitty and Ed. So Smitty pulls out his cell phone and he notices a key attached to it, which makes no sense because literally five minutes ago, he was using that cell phone to look for a signal and there was no key attached to it. But they use the key to open like some storage bin that's in the room. Is that what I think it is? That looks like a body. I don't know why I said that like a house player. That looks like a body. Uh, that looks like a body. You do know that's literally a corpse, right? Okay, so they, they pull the body out and they realize it's Smitty's twin brother, Alex. That's my twin brother! That's Alex! James! James? I thought he said his name was Smitty. James? Uh, I thought he said his name was Smitty. I don't know why he gave... Ed a different name, but I'm just gonna keep calling him Smitty. So that is Smitty and his brother's name Alex. But while the twins are freaking out on the floor together, Ed actually has a theory about who kidnapped them. How's your guy's relationship right now? I don't see what that has to do with any of this, man. I'm gonna guess that means not good. Then how do you know my brother and because I were- Because it fits the MO. The MO of what? The guy I've been writing about. So you mean to tell me, the reporter, Ed is currently writing a story about a guy kidnapping people, locking them up, and it took him this long to connect the dots. You know, for a guy whose full name is Education, I don't think he has one. That's what Ed is short for, right? They call him the Reconciler. He said it! He said it! He said the name of the movie! So now we've got our main antagonist of the film. Let's see what he's all about. The Reconciler. This has his signature all over it. What signature? Kidnapping estranged family members and locking them up until they talk. I remember reading something about him doing this to like two cops or something. Yeah, man. The reconciler kidnaps people uh, who can't get along and he holds them captive until they work out their differences. And then once they do, he sets them free. They call him the reconciler. That's gotta be the lamest serial killer of all time, I think. Could you imagine if Jigsaw was that nice? You're not in any real danger. I just miss the way things used to be. Dude, this movie had so much potential to be the Christian Saw. You know, like in my head, I thought it was going to be exactly like Saw, but instead of like the trap killing you, maybe the trap like makes you commit like a sin or something, you know? Like this is how I thought the movie was going to go. Hello. Do you want to pray again? What the f***? You see, I have taken the liberty of opening your text message conversation with your super religious mother, and I have typed out, God damn it. As you can see, I have also rigged the device to slowly lower your hand towards the send buzzer. You have one minute to either saw your arm off or live in sin for the rest of your life. Choose wisely. Oh, oh my god. Oh, you're actually doing it. Oh my god. Okay, wow. <laughs> this is awesome. Sweet. That was a close one. Oh no! I pressed the send button by accident! Also, why did I saw my arm off? This hand was free the whole time! Ah, uh, I mean, ah. Uh. But it's not like that, okay? It's not like that at all! So now the movie cuts to a flashback of the Reconciler's first victims. There's these two detectives who are partners, but they can't get along with each other. You know, they wake up locked in a car parked in some warehouse. And dude, this lady detective thinks it's a prank for like, Way too long. Ha ha ha, very funny. Are you trying to get the last laugh here or something? You wait till I fall asleep, you drive to a new location, you wake me up, and then you act like you had nothing to do with it. You took the radio too? This is pathetic, Bill. What is going on? I don't know. Like, I'm no detective, but I think it's pretty stupid that whenever you're in danger, you're just like, oh, wow, well, good joke, man. Look, just turn around and walk away, okay? I don't, <laughs> I don't wanna hurt you. Nice gun, tough guy. What are you gonna do, shoot me with it? <laughs> All right, who's the wise guy? Who put this bullet hole here? Is this some sort of joke? Okay, ha <laughs> ha, very funny guys. Come on, fess up. Who's doing this? Oh, ow, good prank guys, come on. Oh yeah, classic, classic. You got the classic light at the end of the tunnel with all my deceased loved ones beckoning me towards the pearly gates. Guess I'll go to heaven. <laughs> so while the detectives are freaking out in the car, they find a voice recording, just like in the movie Saw. And dude, I am not exaggerating. This is one of the funniest movie scenes I have ever seen in my entire life. Hello, detectives. I'm sure by now you're wondering how you got here and what's happening. In police work, you need to depend upon your partner. The two of you haven't been acting like partners for a long time. 
and it's been getting worse. The department knows of your growing animosity. Frankly, though, you're the best team they've got. <laughs> Bill with your instincts, and Stacy with your street smarts. When the two of you work together, it really makes a difference in this town. But the bickering and lack of trust has let your bureau and the citizens of the city down. Dude, <coughs> Dude this is so stupid, man. Dude, what kind of criminal kidnaps cops in order to, like, encourage them to do better police work, man? Bill with your instincts, Stacy with your street smart. Dude, it's so stupid. Also, just break a window, you know? You got guns, you got elbow. Break a window, it can't be that hard. Also, how does the how does the reconciler know this? How could he possibly know the inner workings of a detective duo in a small town? Once you work things out, I will let you out of the car. <sighs> okay, so the movie like periodically cuts back to the detective duo, so we'll get back to them in a second. But now it's back to the original group of guys. So they actually end up finding letters addressed to each one of them, and the reconciler explains that they have to work through their problems to escape the room. You and your brother have some issues to work out. And dude, here's the thing that makes no sense about this movie. If I was locked in a room against my will with someone that I had an issue with, and the only way to escape that room to save my life was to forgive that person? Dude, easy. I'm out of there in 10 seconds, dude. Like, you could have pushed me down the stairs, sawed my arm off, and I'd be like, you know what, honestly, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what you did to me. That was, you know, it's all good. Water under the bridge, I don't care, okay? We're all good. Like, there was no problem big enough that would keep me in a room until I died, you know? Three of you have enough food and supplies to last you for a week. I'm sorry? A week? The Reconciler gives them a whole week? He doesn't mess around. Yes, he does. That's all he's doing. So let me remind you, at this point in the story, we still don't know why the brothers are mad at each other. So it must be pretty crazy if they're putting it off for later in the movie, right? It must be, you know, one of the, maybe one of the brothers killed their mom or something. I'm excited. Not yet, though. Aww. It's a Christian movie. We gotta add some filler. So to pass time, we cut to another pair of the Reconciler's victims. This time, it's the typical army dad who doesn't spend enough time with with his son. But this one is especially goofy. They wake up in the middle of a forest or something, but they realize they know exactly where they are. I think I know where we are. Mom always wanted you to bring me here for like a father-son hike. So they read the letter and it says the keys to the handcuffs are at the top of the hiking trail. And they need to reconcile the relationship on the way up there. The keys to the cuffs, the top of the trail. But like, they're outside. You know what I mean? Like, they're not locked. Like They're, they're free to go. Especially since they're on a public hiking trail on a beautiful day. I think they're gonna see another person and be like, hey, can you help us? We're like tied up. Also, there's nothing forcing them to reconcile. They just have to walk to the top of the hiking trail. I feel like that'll make them hate each other even more. <laughs> but regardless, the dad doesn't want to be shackled to his loser son anymore. You really hate spending time with me that much, don't you, dad? I'm a soldier in the United States Army. So he's gonna use his big, strong muscles to break the chain. <laughs> don't worry, son. I got it. Why isn't it working? So for the rest of the movie, it jumps between the three guys locked up and the flashbacks of the detectives and the father and son. Sorry, they also cut back to this older detective who is also investigating the reconciler. And it's super funny because in his office, he has like the classic detective like cork board, you know? And it has all the victims of the reconciler. And it's really interesting because they all say found, except for this like random father and son duo, I guess. So we can only assume they didn't work through their issues in time. And honestly, that's what this movie should have been about. It should have been about those two guys. I want to see how stubborn those dudes are, you know? Please, just admit that you're wrong. No, we're both about to die. Just please admit that you're wrong so we can go home. Never. Kelly Clarkson did the voice for E.T. Who told you that? But now we cut back to the three amigos, and this is when we finally find out why the brothers are mad at each other. Plain and simply, he turned his back on God. I have not. Yeah, you did. You haven't been to church in two years. How do you know? And besides, it doesn't even matter. Going to church has nothing sure? to do with- Yeah, man. That's it. No dead mom after all. No! The real reason they can't put their differences aside to save their lives is because Smitty hasn't gone to church in two years. Okay, everything is so black and white with him. He doesn't it get black it. And white. You're either for Jesus or you're against him. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> So they keep talking about God. Then we cut back to the old detective talking to the other 
lady detective because he wants to go to the warehouse where she was held captive when the reconciler kidnapped her and her partner. Where was that again? Which is wild because like, shouldn't you already have that information if you're actively investigating the reconciler? Now this is gonna sound crazy, a little unorthodox, a little outside of the box. But what if I went to the scene of the crime, sort of looked around for, I don't know, clues or evidence, you know? Sounds like an interesting angle. And obviously it wouldn't be a Christian movie without a big emotional montage. Everybody falls sometimes. You gotta find the strength to rise from the ashes and make a new... And this is where things get really gnarly. This is where the movie puts the silly in reconciliation. And I've done good work. And when the promotion comes up, who gets it? You do. Yeah, so she's upset that her partner got the promotion over her, which is fair, you know? She's been there longer. I have been with the department three years longer than you have. So let's see how they reconcile this problem. Okay, I do need to try a little bit harder and, and be better. As partners? Dude, <laughs> I don't think that's correct at all. Look, I'm a guy, okay? For I didn't even want the promotion, but I took it. You, on the other hand, you're a chick. Okay? You gotta work way harder than me if you wanna get what you want. Partners? Partners. To me, that's not reconciliation. But to the reconciler, that was perfect. That was sufficient because as soon as they reconcile, the doors unlock. Did you hear that? Let's get out of here. Yeah. Consider them reconciled. And now it's time for the military dad and his son. Who do you think I fight for? <laughs> you guys. Look, son, when I initiate a drone strike that kills hundreds of civilians, I do that for you. But yo, once they're done arguing, something crazy happens. The son slips and falls, and he's dangling off the mount. Oh, okay, well, I guess he didn't really slip. He sort of just, he sort of just walked off the cliff. Did he forget he was on top of a mountain? I'm gonna pull on the chain, use it for leverage to climb back up. You're dangling from the chain. I'm gonna pull on the chain and in turn pull you up. All right, so he pulls his son up, and the son passes out for some reason. So now the dad has to carry him up the mountain, Madame Zeroni style. And they make it to the top of the mountain and they and now they love each other again. Which doesn't make sense because they didn't reconcile anything, dude. The dad didn't even like save the son's life like as a selfless thing. Like if he, if the son fell off the cliff, so would the dad. So how do we know? How, how do we know why he saved the kid, right? And now it's time for the grand finale. The three amigos. So let's see how their story ends. Oh wait, sorry. Before we do that, I gotta play this part because when I saw it for the first time, I laughed really hard. And the cops, they, uh, they stayed partners? Yep. It sounds really similar to what Alex and I are going through. What? <laughs> what? 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 It seems like he forgot he was on a movie set and he was genuinely confused by what that guy just said to him. You know, it sounds really similar to what Alex and I are going through. What? Who's Alex? That guy's name is Jeremy. He's an actor. You know that, right? All right, cut. Dude, can you stop yelling that? I'm trying to have a conversation with this guy. What? All right, you remember at the beginning of this video where I said this movie has a crazy twist ending? Well, strap in. The twins forgive each other and they hug it out and then Ed puts his cane down and walks to the other side of the room. He never had a hurt leg after all. Your leg is okay? What? But that's not it. I, <laughs> the big twist isn't his ankle. Let's see the actual twist. Well, I told you that I was a reporter. Kind of. And as for the reconciler, the two of you have been talking about him the entire time you've been in here. If you guys missed that, uh, who have they been talking about the whole time? God. God. Jesus. God. I think the reconciler is God. Uh -huh. While there's earthquakes and starvation and murder and famine going on, God is going around being like, These two detectives are the best this small town has. I gotta do everything I can to make sure this woman thinks she does not deserve a promotion. I'm sweating so much. And dude, that's not even the end of it. Because that begs the question, if the reconciler is God, who the f is Ed? I thought you said that was locked. It was locked. I checked it. How'd you do that? The same way that I got those cops out of their car. The same way that I helped Jeff pull JR off that cliff. <laughs> the only difference between those assignments and this one is that it was decided that it was time for me to work a case up close and personal. Well, now we know why the son passed out after his dad pulled him up off the ledge. You know, he, he was probably confused by this strange man <laughs> casting a strength spell on his dad. I'm a messenger 
I'm a guardian and other things as well. You're a... <laughs> Again, if that old lady would have given some money to the VFX department. We were religious. Okay, so yeah, I guess Ed was an angel? What? Is that what Christians have to look forward to when they go to heaven? You're sent back to earth to be a pawn in God's like weird therapy sessions that might kill people? I mean, I guess it's worth it because you get sweet superpowers. Like the power to unlock a car. But yeah, uh, the movie ends with the old detective finding them with his awesome detective work and uh, everybody goes home safe and happy. It's a pretty amazing story. And that is The Reconciler. Probably the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. And that is saying a lot. But at the end of the day, that's just my opinion, right? So let's take a look at some other reviews to see what the general public thinks of this movie. We got one review, a 10 out of 10 on IMDb. Gripping from minute one, says the great Scott magician. I have been a movie buff for many years. I've also been a fan of the faith-themed genre. But I have often believed most faith-themed filmmakers are behind a time when it comes to what people are watching these days. I have heard mainstream film after mainstream film use the following sentence for their trailers. Gripping from minute one. Well, Christian films have gotten many right, most of them you need to give them about a half hour before they get good. This film, on the other hand, and gives you a reason to watch and stay with the movie from the moment it opens. It's not just a message in the story, is a tool. There is an actual story. Not bad for a director and actor who decided to write together for the first time. Uh, yeah, okay. The great Scott magician. Loved it, I guess. That's great. Let's, uh, let's check this dude out. Hold on, is that... What? That is Ed. Okay, great. So the only positive review for this movie is the star of the movie. I didn't know this until like a couple minutes ago, but the last line of that review was oddly specific. You know what I mean? Not bad for a director and actor who decided to write together for the first time. Like, what? What? what the, how would you know that? So I looked it up, and Scott was also a co-writer of The Reconciler. Actually makes a lot of sense that he's a magician, you know? That explains how he disappeared at the end of the movie. Sorry, I wanna see some of this guy's magic tricks. I wanna, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna look him up. Here he is. I am, for all intents and purposes, a magician. But I'm a little different than most magicians, because I am a magic man of God. Ooh, that's tough, dude. Magic man of God has got to be the sickest thing I've ever heard, man. Oh my. <laughs> Imagine all the YouTube comments on this are like from him as well. Gripping from minute one. I know it's gripping from minute one. Dude, <laughs> okay, never mind. All the comments are from other magicians named the Great Scott. Hi, I'm the other Great Scott the Magician, and this spamming on both our walls is not decent. By the way, I am in Australia. Get tickets. And I searched the trademarks which showed this name as available worldwide. And then Great Scott Magician New Jersey. I hope God forgives you for using my trademarked name. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not very Christian of you to steal a trademarked name. What? All right, sorry, I got a little off track there. But in conclusion, you know, I think making a Christian horror movie is probably one of the hardest things you could ever try to do, which makes horror movies so sick. But you know what? If they're going to make some more Christian remakes of horror movies... I got some ideas, okay? Instead of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, you could do Virgin Mary's Frankincense. Instead of Friday the 13th, it's a good Friday the 13th. Instead of Halloween, you could do a movie called Christmas. Those are all like classic horror movies. If they want to stay current, you know, they could do, you know, instead of Nope, a movie called Pope. <laughs> Christian filmmakers, you can have all of those, okay? Just keep the squirting cross out of it. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press that like button because believe it or not, one like equals one detective I am gonna lock up in a car. Uh, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. It's always fun reading the comments on these videos because I feel like people notice things that I don't, um, so I'm very excited. Also, press the subscribe button because as soon as you do, you become a valued citizen of Curtistown. If you didn't know, Curtis Town's the best place to live in the world, and I'm the mayor. So you have to be nice to me. It's the law. Yeah, you can check the description for other things I do. My podcast, my gaming channel, Instagram, Twitter. You can get tickets to see me in Australia. It's going to be so fun. My first time in Australia. I can't wait. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I would stick around, but unfortunately, I have to go. There's a toilet in the other room that needs to reconcile with my ass. Peace. What?